spell your last name. Rogan Gibson, G I B S O N. Mr. Gibson, how are you doing today? Good. Ask the court reporter something, we'll give her a chance to catch up. You good? Um, Mr. Gibson, uh, I want you to introduce yourself to the jury a little bit. Uh, tell us uh, you know, where you grew up, uh, where you went to high school, just a little bit about yourself uh, before we uh, get to your testimony. Uh, I went to Wade Hampton High School. I'm from Hampton. All right. And uh, you working now? I am. All right. What field do you work in? The agriculture field. All right. Why don't you see if you can pull that mic up just a little bit and scoot up just a hair so you're speaking into it. I appreciate it. Okay. Um, you, uh, you said you're working in agriculture, is that right? That's correct. All right. And currently still working in agriculture? That's correct. Right. Back in June of 2021, what were you doing? Working in agriculture? That's correct. Farming. Uh, what kind of job did you have? I was farming, operating equipment. Operating equipment, okay. And uh, let, me, uh, let me ask you, did you uh, get to know uh, Paul Murdoch? I did. All right, and tell me, uh, how old were you when you got to know Paul Murdoch? I've known him all my life, real good probably when I was 11, 12 years old. And how did y'all get to meet one another? How did you become closer? I lived next to him. Okay, and when did that happen? When I was 11, 12 years old. 11 to 12? Y'all went to school together? Uh, Paul was a little bit younger than me, and I didn't go to school with him. Okay. Um, when y'all were growing up, what kind of things y'all liked to do together? We enjoyed the outdoors, hunting, fishing, hanging around the farm. Were you uh, close friends with Paul until the day he was murdered? I was. Tell the jury just a little bit about Paul. Give me just a little sense of who he was as a person. He loved outdoors, hunting, fishing, hanging around. Really enjoyed the, the farm out there at Moselle. Fun guy to be around? He was. <clears throat> Over the years, as you got to be closer friends with Paul, did you get to be closer friends with the rest of the family? I was. And was that just uh, Paul and his, his brother and his parents, or was it sort of the Murdochs, uh, the larger family as well? The whole family. And over those years, as you became close with them, how close would you say? How close did you become? Real close, like a second family. Like a second family to you? Yes, sir. Um, Paul, did you have a nickname for him, or did he have a nickname? A rooster. Uh, his brother, Buster, did he have a, a name or a nickname? He called him Bus. Bus. Uh, what'd you call Maggie? Miss Maggie. Okay. What did you uh, call Mr. Randolph, uh, Paul's grandfather? Handsome. Handsome. Uh, how about uh, Miss Libby, his, his wife, Paul's grandmother? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, how about Maggie's parents? Did you have nicknames for them? I called them Papa T and Grandma. Papa T and Grandma? That's like correct. M A R at the end? That's correct. What'd you call Alec? Mr. Alec, a big red. Mr. Alec, a big red. Um, you said they were like a second family to you. That's correct. Um, being that close to this family, did you frequently go out to Moselle? All the time. You ever go to, did they have other properties too that you ever went to? They did. What were the other properties they had? Now hold uh, up for the sirens if you will. Edisto Beach, we went there a lot. They had a house at Edisto Beach? That's correct. And any other properties while you were growing up that you recall? The property in Hammond, the house in Hammond. All right. Yeah, did they ultimately sell that property? They did. You remember about how long ago that was? N not real sure. When you uh, would go out, when did they get Moselle? I mean, just roughly. Uh, I believe it was like my freshman year in high school, so. 14. 2014, something like that? No, it was, I graduated in 14, so probably around 2010, maybe. Okay. And over the years, did you spend a lot of time out there? I did. What were some of the things that you would do with Paul out there? We would hunt, fish, hang around. Ride around the property? Yeah, work the food plots with equipment. Um, I got States 303 right here on this poster board. Can I ask you to uh, come on down with uh, the judge's permission and let's, uh, let's kind of point out some things to the jury. All right, 
Do you recognize this image? And what is that? Keep your voice up if you could. That's a picture of the, the overview of the Moselle property. Okay. And where's the residence in this picture? Right here. Right. And is there a driveway to that residence? That would be the main driveway. Right. Do you see Moselle Road on this particular uh, image? Going right down there. All right. Uh, what's, uh, what's this red roof building right there? That's the old airplane hangar. Okay. And uh, did y'all have a name for that? Did you call it the hangar? Yeah, the shed, the hangar. The shed or the hangar. Uh, any other structures out there? That was the newer shed, the tractor shed. Mm -hmm. It's all kennel. Okay. And that's the skin and shed. Skin and shed? And just real quick, what's the skin and shed for? It's a process. Wild game out there. Skin wild game out there. Was there a driveway uh, to that part of the property? There was. Is that where it went right there? What's that? That's where it went right there that you just pointed? Yeah, the, the driveway to, to the shed right there. Okay. Was that driveway commonly used? It was. Um, was there, a, what's the structure right here? That's the old cabin, the hunting cabin. Okay. And um, how about across the street? Was there, was there any structures across the street? There was. All right, what was it there across? It was a shooting house. All right, and can you just point roughly where that'd be? It, it might, Right at the top of the picture? That's okay. Correct. All right. And what is this right here? The pond. All right. And when y'all were, uh, what was the shooting house used for? We were sighted in rifles, shooting kind of at that angle with the target down here. All right. Would y'all shoot uh, rifles from the shooting house? We would. What about shotguns? Would y'all shoot those over at that shooting area? Yeah, most of the time we shot them around the pond. Around the pond? That's correct. Okay. Um, is this a line of trees right here? It is. And on the other side of that line of trees, well, what did y'all call that? The dove field. The dove field? Okay. All right, you can go ahead and have a seat for me, thank you. <clears throat> you uh, mentioned that uh, y'all like to, to ride the property and shoot, prop, uh, shoot and hunt out there, is that right? That's correct. What kind of hunting would y'all do out there? Anything we could hunt. Okay. Uh, well, give me some examples, if you would, please. Hog hunt, deer, turkeys. Okay. Hog hunting, deer, and turkeys? Dove, quail. Let me ask you this. Turkey season, do you know when that is in South Carolina? It's like March, mid-March to early May. All right, so it's a very fairly short period of time in that, that time period? That's correct. Right. Um, you mentioned hogs first. Uh, tell me about the hog hunting. What, what would y'all, how would y'all go hog hunting? A lot of times we'd shoot them at night with a thermal scope. Okay. And what weapon would y'all use to, uh, to shoot those hogs with the thermal scope? 300 blackout. Okay. Uh, and whose weapon was that? I think it was Buster's. Well, tell me about what you know about the blackouts, how the family got those blackouts. They bought two of them, one for Paul and one for Buster. Okay. And do you know, can you describe those two? Did you see both of them back in the day? They, yes. They were, um, they were similar build. One was black. One was like a green, tannish color. Okay. And did anything ever happen to one of them? Yes. One of them was stolen. Okay. And were you present when that happened or around when that happened? I wasn't present. I was just told about it. And what was the story you were told about that? I was told somebody took it out of Paul's truck at a party. At a party? Okay. How long ago was that? I'm not exactly sure. I mean, years? Um, yes, it's been five, six years probably. Okay. Um, right, let me show you something real quick. I'm going to show you what's already been entered into evidence in States 163. And we'll have you look at that image, and particularly what's there on that pool table. Do you recognize that? That's a picture of a 300 blackout. All right. And is that, that the one that you and Paul would take hog hunting? Yes, that's one of them. Uh, you said one got stolen. To your knowledge, was there ever a replacement gun? I don't remember a replacement. No, you sir. don't remember a replacement. You remember Paul using the black one, is that right? That's correct, or either the green and tan one before it was stolen. Before it was stolen. That's correct. Five or six years ago. Correct. Um, what other guns did Paul use a lot that he favored? He favored a super black eagle shotgun, 
12 gauge. All right, let me show you another image if I could. I'm going to show you what's already been admitted into evidence in stage three and see if you recognize that. I do. All right, tell me what that is. A super black eagle. All right, and do you specifically recognize that gun? Yes. And what gun is that? That's Paul's gun. And how can you tell? The camo pattern and the strap. Um, would Paul frequently have weapons with him when he was on the property or in his truck or that sort of thing? He would. All right. What sort of weapons would he have frequently have with him? A lot of times he carried the 300 blackout in his vehicle and then, I mean, sometimes pistols, different shotguns. Okay. But, All right. Would he carry that uh, shotgun a lot as well? Yes, I have seen him carry that shotgun. Box of gloves right there. We just put them on the floor behind you, just kind of out of the way. I'm gonna have you look in here and see if you recognize that. That's Super Black Eagle Three of Paul's. That's Paul's favorite shotgun. That's correct. What about deer? Did he have a weapon he liked uh, hunting deer with? He did. It was a 7 millimeter 08. Okay. Um, did Paul ever have any pistols, to your knowledge, or carry around any pistols? He did sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Uh, what were his favorite two guns? Or the most guns he most commonly had around? Probably that 300 and uh, Super Black Eagle. That's the ones I've seen him use the most. Uh, tell me about uh, a little bit about the uh, the hawk hunt. You said y'all would hunt them at night. That's correct. All right. And tell me how that works. What, what would y'all do? Y'all walking around? Y'all riding around? Riding around? How does that go? Most of the time we drove four wheeler vehicle. We didn't hardly ever walk, but that scope, the thermal scope, would pick up the heat. Okay. And where on the property would y'all hunt? All over. The hogs you hunt all over. That's correct. Um, when you and Paul were together hunting uh, with that blackout, um, did you usually have the gun and shooting, or did Paul usually have the gun and shoot? It just depends. Who had the gun more? Probably Paul. One guy's driving, the other guy's looking? That's correct. Is that something y'all did frequently? A good bit, yes sir. Uh, if y'all ever killed a hog, what would y'all do with it? Sometimes we would give it to people that wanted to butcher it. Sometimes we just let nature take its course, just leave it wherever it was shot at. It just depends. Sometimes we'd skin them out ourselves. Or uh, hogs and nuisance animal? They are. We're talking a little bit about Paul and who he was. How was Paul with his cell phone? He was on his cell phone a lot. Let me ask you a little bit about Miss Maggie. Uh, you mentioned before that the family had a couple of properties. Uh, in the summertime, where did Miss Maggie prefer to stay? She liked to stay at Edisto. And did you know why she preferred Edisto? Because of the yellow flies at Moselle. The yellow flies? That's correct. Uh, what about Paul and, and Alec? Where would they stay most of the time? Well, Paul, if he was back home, he'd stay at Moselle. But a lot of times he was in Columbia or Charleston. Did he have an apartment in Charleston? No, not, not to my knowledge in Charleston, no. I'm sorry, in Columbia. I in Columbia, say. yes. Okay, thank you. Um, back in uh, June 7th of 2021, you were working in agriculture? That's correct. Working in farming? That's correct. Hard work? Yes, sir. 
What times do you have to get up in the morning to go to work? Normally get up about 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock. Where were you staying at that point in time? I was staying at my girlfriend's house in Buford. In Buford. Um, you don't have to say her last name. What was her first name? Mary Ann. Mary Ann. Okay. And uh, why were you staying at Buford at that period, at that point in time? Was that where your house was or, or not? No, my house was not there. I, I was working on St. Helena. It made it a closer ride for me to go to work. So you're staying with your girlfriend because of that? That's correct. Did you have a dog at that time? I did. And uh, what kind of dog? Chocolate Lab. Chocolate Lab. Uh, still have the Chocolate Lab? I do. What's the dog's name? Cash. Cash. Okay. How old was Cash about that time? I'm guessing some, he was a puppy, four, six months old maybe. Um, did you, uh, were you able to keep Cash with you when you were staying at your girlfriend's in Buford? I was not able to. And why was that? Because she wasn't allowed. She was renting a house. We couldn't keep one there. What uh, arrangements did you make for Cash when you were staying in Beaufort and you couldn't keep him at your girlfriend's house? I would leave him at the kennels at Moselle. And tell me how that came to be. How did you work that out? I asked Mr. Ellick if I could leave him there. I'd be gone at a week at a time. Right. Just leave him there for a week, pick him back up when I come back home on the weekend. Right. Did you uh, leave food for him, that sort of thing? I did. So where was he staying when he was at Moselle during the week when you were working? In the kennel. In the kennel. Describe the kennels a little bit for the, for the jury. Uh, what was the structure like? It was like a lean-to shed with about eight, somewhere around eight kennels under it, a feed room on the end. And Cash was staying in one of those? That's correct. You'd go get him on the weekend? Friday night or either Saturday, yes. Where would you take him then? Back to my house. All right. And just where were you living at that time? In Collin County. In Collin County. Um, you get up uh, at 5 a.m. and get to work. What about what time do you get to work, uh, work in farming? I'd roughly get to work somewhere around 7, 7.30. 7, 7.30. And then what time would you get off? It all depended. What time typically I mean, would you get off? 5, 6, 7 o'clock. Just depending on how much work need to get done? That's correct. Were you pretty tired when you got home? I was. During the course of that day, June 7th, 2021, did you have any communications with Paul? I did. What's Some, the first one you remember? Sometime around lunchtime. All right. What did y'all communicate? Did y'all talk on the phone? Did y'all text or what? Yeah, I think he called me and told me about the sunflowers had been sprayed in the dove field and they were dead. Okay. What did he say about that? Said that he was getting ready to replant them. Okay. They'd been sprayed with some Roundup or something? That's correct. Did y'all talk about anything else that you remember? Not that I remember. Well, I'm thinking about it. Um, I asked you about Paul and his use of a cell phone. Do you know where he kept his cell phone when it wasn't in his hand? Most of the time in his pockets. Um, was he typically one to respond pretty quick to you? If you were talking about something? Normally, yeah, if we were talking about something, he would respond pretty quick. That evening, well, I took, did, you Paul, did you talk to Paul again after that initial conversation? I did. All right, and when was that, roughly? Around eight, eight forty. Okay. And what, uh, what was that conversation about? He called and said, asked if something was wrong with the dog's tail. Okay. And was that the first you were hearing about that? That's correct. Tell me about your conversation. I told him that you know I wasn't real sure. I just dropped him off there Sunday, mm -hmm. and um, told him let's try to see if he can get me a picture or FaceTime me and let me see what was going on with the dog's tail. All right. Where was Paul? When he called you? He was at the dog kennels. And how do you know that? I could hear the dogs barking in the original call. Is he describing to you what he's seeing on Cash's tail? That's correct. And Cash was at the kennels? He was. Did you hear any other voices when you were on the phone with Paul about 840? I did. And what voices did you hear? I heard Miss Maggie. And who else did you hear? And I thought it was Mr. Ellick that I heard. You thought it was Mr. Ellick? You talked to Paul, and, and what did y'all talk about? What was he going to do? He was going to try to FaceTime me. And he said, you know how the service is out here. He said, if I can't get the FaceTime to go through, I'll send you a video. 
And why was he going to FaceTime you? What's the difference between FaceTime and a regular call? So I could see what the dog, what was wrong with the dog. And y'all talked about how the service is out here? That's correct. And what did you mean by that? Most of the time you've got enough service to make a call. I mean, sometimes the calls will break up, but a FaceTime, you couldn't really get a whole lot of service to make the FaceTime call. It's kind of lagging. Y'all had problems with that before? That's correct. Did y'all discuss what to do if the FaceTime didn't work? And what was the discussion? He was going to send me a video of it, of the dog. He was going to video it and then do what with it? Text it to you? That's correct. Is that the last time you ever talked to your friend? That was. Did y'all try to FaceTime? We did. Did it work? It, it came through, but it was kind of lagging. I couldn't tell what was going on. And then never heard from him again? That's correct. Did you ever get that video? I did not. After you never got the video, did you try to reach back out to Paul to see if you could get him to respond? I did. I called him a few times and texted him. Did he ever respond? He didn't. Did you reach out to anyone else trying to get Paul to respond? I texted Miss Maggie. Did she respond? She did. About what time do you think you went to bed that night? I'm not exactly sure. It was sometime right after I probably tried to contact him. And you never heard from Miss Maggie either? I did. Did you ever talk to her at all that day? I didn't. What time, about what time do you think you went to bed? I'm going to say somewhere around 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock. You a pretty sound sleeper? That's correct. Been working on the farm all day? That's correct. Did some calls come in that you didn't realize because you were asleep? Yes, I woke up with some missed calls. What time did you wake up the next morning? Sometime around 5, 5.30. When did you find out that your friend Paul and his mother Maggie had been murdered? That same time, 5, 5.30. How would you find out? I called one of my friends that had left me, a, or I had a missed call from, and mm -hmm. he told me what had happened. And tell me his first name, please. Nolan. What'd you do after that? We got a little boy up and got him to school without talking about it a whole lot, and then we headed back home. And by home, you mean Collison County? Collison County, that's correct. And where'd you go from there? I went to my house first. Then I ended up going to Moselle. About what time you think you got there? Sometime maybe 8, 30, 9 o'clock. Um, what did you see when you got there? Where would you go on the property? I went to the dog kennels. Okay. And who did you see there? Did you talk to anyone there? I did, and I seen John Marvin, but I didn't speak to him.
you recognize those? I do. And what are those? And that's all activity on my phone. Okay. Missed calls, text. Stand by for one, one side. Uh, Your Honor, just out of the bonus caution, I believe these are in evidence, but just to be clear, 165, 166, 167, 168, 169, 170, 171, and 172. Uh, we would make sure those are in evidence. Move those in evidence to leave without objection. That's correct. No objection. <coughs> They're admitted. All right. May I have the Elmo, please? Mr. Gibson, I'm going to uh, put these up on the screen. You got a screen up there. Uh, and so take a look at that, okay? Okay. All right, 165. Can y'all turn the screen around for me, please? That's a, a screenshot that Jeff Croft took of your phone that uh, on June 8th, 2021, the next day? That's correct. All right. And that reflects a call from who? Paul. And which Paul is that? Paul Murdoch. All right. And what time is that call? 8.40 p.m. And how long does it last? Four minutes. All right. And is that the call you just described to this jury? It is. The call y'all were talking about, Cash the Dog, and trying to figure out the tail? It is. I'm going to show you what's been marked as 166. Now, again, you told this jury that when y'all got off the call, he was going to try to FaceTime you, and if not, send a video. That's correct. All right, I'll show you 166. Is that another screenshot of it? It is. And that's the uh, FaceTime call, is that right? That's correct. 8.44 p.m.? That's correct. For 11 seconds? That's correct. That FaceTime didn't work, though, did it? Yeah, it, was, it came through, but it was lagging. We couldn't communicate through it. So y'all stopped? That's correct. And you were expecting what after that? A video. I'm going to show you what's been marked as States 167. Are these texts that were on your phone? <clears throat> they are. And who are those texts between? Who are you trying to text right there down those last two bubbles? I was sending those texts to Paul. All right. It's got a little glare on it. But what time is that text right there? 8.49 p.m. And that's on June 7th, 2021? That's correct. And what are you telling Paul right there? Can you read that to the jury and then explain what you were trying to say to Paul, please? See if you can get a good picture of it. Mary Ann wants to send it to a girl we know, and that's a vet. Tell him to sit and stay, and he shouldn't move around too much. Who were you talking about when you said tell him to sit and stay? Cash, the dog. Did you send another text right here? I did. What time is that? Can you read it? 9.58 p.m. What, what do you say? Yo. And when you say yo to Paul, what are you trying to get him to do? Just trying to get him to call me back or text me back. So you haven't gotten that video? That's correct. I'm going to show you what's been marked as 168 states. Is that another screenshot of your phone? That is. And these are uh, missed calls from June 7th, 2021? That's correct. Are these are outgoing calls? They are. Who are you trying to call? Paul Murdoch. Tell me the times you tried to call him. Start from the bottom, please. 9, 10 p.m. 9.29 p.m., 9.42 p.m., 9.57 p.m. Did he ever respond? No, sir. I'll show you what's been marked as States 169. Is that another screenshot of your phone? It is. Who are you trying to call right there? Paul. What's that last call? 10.08 p.m. Did he answer that call? He did not. I'll show you what's been marked as States 170. Is that another screenshot of your phone? It is. And who are you trying to uh, text right here? Miss Maggie. What time did you try to text her? 9.34 p.m. And what did you text her? Tell Paul to call me. Tell Paul to call me? Yes, sir. Did she ever respond? She did not. You said you woke up the next morning on June 8th, 2021, and you saw you had some missed calls. Is that right? That's correct. 
I'm going to show you what's been marked as States 171. This is also a screenshot or a picture that uh, Special Agent Croft took of your phone. It is. All right. And who are those missed calls from? Mr. Hillock. And what time did they come in? 10:21 p.m. and 10:24 p.m. And did you? That would have been on June 7th, 2021. That's correct. Were you asleep at that time? I was. Unaware they were coming in. That's correct. 172. Is that another screenshot of your phone? It is. Right. And those other missed calls that came in? 1025 p.m. and 1030 p.m. When you spoke to Special Agent Croft on June 8th, 2021, did you tell him and Special Agent McAllister who you thought you heard on that phone call at 840? I did. And who did you say you heard? I thought it was Mr. Ellick, but I wasn't exactly sure. Did you give him a percentage? I did. What did you say? 99%. That you heard Mr. Ellick on that phone call at 840? That's correct. Mm -hmm. As time went on after the murders, did you go to Moselle where all the family and friends were gathering? I did. Were you there a fair amount? Probably the whole part of that next or that later that week. While you were there at the house where the family and friends had gathered, did anyone ever ask you about your last contact with Paul? There was. And who asked you? Grandma. And that being Miss Brandstutter? That's correct. Maggie's mother? That's correct. And what did you say? I told her, yeah, that I talked to Paul about the dog. And told her that I heard Miss Maggie in the background and I heard a male voice that I thought was Mr. Ellick. Was he in the room then? Yes. Did he stand up and say, no, I wasn't there? He did. Did you ever have any conversation with Alec Murdoch about what happened that night? No, sir. Did he ever ask you about whether or not you heard him on that, that phone that night? No, sir. Did he ever tell you what he did that night? No, sir. Did you ever ask him what he did that night? No, sir. Not a subject you wanted to talk about, was it? That's correct. Over time, as the months passed following the murder of Paul and Maggie, did you, you were ultimately interviewed by law enforcement and, and other part of the process and that sort of thing, is that correct? That's correct. And as time went on and you were asked about who you heard on the phone that night, that call at 840, you said, hey, I thought it was Alec, but I can't be sure. That's correct. Told law enforcement the night of, 99% sure, correct? Say that question again, please. Told law enforcement the next day, June 8th, that you were 99% sure, is that correct? That's correct. As time went on, you said, I thought it was Alec, but I can't be sure. That's correct. In November of 2022, did law enforcement ask you to come in and look at a video? They did. And did you watch that video? I did. And what was on that video? It was the video. Paul was supposed to take a cash. Cash was on the video. And did you hear, recognize the voices on there? I did. Did you recognize the voices of your second family? I did. And what voices did you hear? Paul's, Miss Maggie, Miss Ellick. And how sure are you now? Positive. 100%? That's correct. One second for the computer to boot up.
Before we play the video, I want to ask a couple more questions. When you received that phone call from Paul at the Kennels at 8.40 p.m. on the night of June 7, 2021, did Paul sound normal to you? He did. Did he sound stressed to you? He did not. Did he sound like someone was there that he didn't know? No, sir. Did he sound worried? He did. Did you hear Maggie's voice? I did. Did she sound stressed? She did. Did she sound worried? No. Did she sound normal? She did. Did she sound like there was somebody there she didn't know? No, sir. Or that she was in danger? No, sir. Did you hear Alex's voice? What I thought was his voice at the time, yeah. When Maggie or Paul would go down to the kennels, how would they usually get there? They would drive. Um, sometimes Miss Maggie would walk or ride a bike. If they had an ATV or a golf cart in the yard, sometimes they would drive that. Paul more likely would be one to ride or one, one to drive down there? Most of the time he would drive. Was it usual for the family to go down there sometimes and let the dogs out? It was. Let them run around? That's correct. Did Miss Maggie like to do that? She did. Was it common, to your knowledge, for guns to be left down at the kennels? Sometimes there was, yeah. Play that video for you, okay? Okay. It is. Where is that video taken? At the kennels. You recognize your dog? I do. You recognize Paul's voice? Yes, sir. You recognize Maggie's voice? Yes, sir. You recognize Alex's voice? Yes, sir. 100%? Yes, sir. Can you point out Alec Murdoch, the person whose voice you recognize in this video in this courtroom, please? Sitting right there in a gray jacket. Please let the record reflect he's identified the defendant. 
Thank you, Mr. Gibson. <coughs> Nothing further. Times, haven't we? Yes, sir. Um, tell the jury more about Paul, please. What What did y'all like to do together? We loved hunting, fishing, just hanging around. We loved staying at the beach, going to the sandbars. He was he could get along with just about anybody. Is he one of your best friends? He is. Is this a hard day for you? Yes, sir. And did you live um, one summer in, in the cabin there on the property? Yes, me, Buster, and Nolan lived in the cabin. And Paul was there a lot. Right. And, and when you got a house of your own, I, I mean, it was just right down the road, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Down Moselle Road? Yes, sir. It was your grandparents' house or you moved into? That's correct. And um, but before that, Ms. Maggie and Big Red over here, Mr. Alec, I mean, they treated you as family, didn't they? That's correct. They did. And Paul was like a brother to you? Yes, sir. And Ms. Maggie was like a second mom to you? Yes, sir. And Mr. Alec was like a second dad? Yes, sir, he was. And could you tell the jury how, what you observed Alec's relationship was starting with you? What was his relationship with you? We had a good relationship. I mean, he treated me like one of his own. I mean, we, we had fun. He, he gave me permission to hunt the property. Do you have permission to come and go and down at the shop? I did. Did you have permission to use any of the equipment? Yes, sir. And did you help out on, on, the, on the farm for game management and stuff? I did. Okay. And, um, and can you tell the jury a little bit about Mr. Alex's relationship with his son, Paul? Very good relationship. Were Very they, good. Were they close? They were. Nothing happened without Paul telling Ms. Tellick about it. And did, um, jury's heard some, Alec interviewed on the tape, uh, various about how the Moselle property was Paul's passion. It was. You agree with that? Yes, sir. Um, why do you think it was his passion? What, why, what was he so passionate about out there? He, he just loved hunting and with, um, using the equipment to manage for wild game, fishing. Right. He loved all of that. Was Paul a good friend? Yes, sir. Was he a loyal friend? He was. Was he a loyal son? Yes, sir. Tell me about Miss Maggie. She was like a second mother to me. Always took care of me. Treated me like one of hers. Did, um, you spend time with down at Edisto. I did. Um, and um, you and Paul and Ms. Maggie sometimes, just the three of you there, down there? It was. Okay. Um, what, what did Ms. Maggie like to do? She liked the beach. Um, when they were down at Edisto, was it were you the only friend welcome at the Edisto house, or, or what was it like? There was many friends that were welcome to the house. Uh, like adult friends, or, or was it, was most Ms. Maggie, Mr. Alex, home, was it open to all of Paul and Buster's friends? It was open to all of Paul and Buster's friends. And was that the case at Edisto? That's correct. Was that the case at Moselle? It was. Um, did... 
Did it appear to you that Mr. Alec enjoyed being around his family? Yes, sir, he did. And did you enjoy being around Mr. Alec and Ms. Maggie? Yes, sir. You remember and I apologize I'm gonna get the date wrong, but um, do you remember in early twenty nineteen that Paul's in a boating accident? Yes, sir. Um, and a beautiful young woman died in that accident, didn't they? Yes, sir. Her name was Mallory Beach. That's correct. And um, and Paul was eventually charged, is that correct? <laughs> Yes, sir. Did, um, did Paul receive any threats or harassments that you knew about as a result of that boating accident? None that I thought was real serious. I mean, he mentioned it that, you know, he'd get people comment about it, but nothing that I thought was real serious. Did, um, did he, um, would people just mouth off to him when he went out in bars or? Just with his friends? Yes, sir. He had mentioned that. But it, was it anything that, that you thought was serious in nature? No, and a lot of times I wasn't there when that happened. Right. So I didn't think it was that serious. Let me let me let me back up. I skipped over something. Um do you played you played sports when you were a kid growing up? Yes, sir. I think your dad was a coach, was he? Yes, sir. And was Mr. Alec a coach to Paul and Buster? He was. And uh, did Mr. Alec, when he wasn't coaching, would, would he and Ms. Maggie come to all the sporting events for the kids? They were always there. Can you think of them ever missing a sporting event for Buster or Paul? Not that I can remember. And they come to your sporting events? Yes. Now, um, was, and Paul had an apartment in 2021. He, he was starting to go back to school at um, Carolina. Do you remember that? He was in college. Yes, sir. School year. That's correct. And then in June, he had moved back to, to he had moved back home. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Was he living at Moselle for the most part? I think he was staying at Moselle some, but kind of all over the place. And sometimes he stayed with his Uncle John Marvin down at um, Bluffton? Yes, sir. And he was working with his Uncle John Marvin, wasn't he? That's correct. Okay. Um, now, when he was on the farm, when he was at Moselle, uh, now this, this gets a little confusing for me. I, frankly, well, let me just ask you. Can you tell the jury about all the farm trucks there at Moselle? Yeah, there was a lot of different vehicles that could be used anywhere from ATVs to tractors. Well, let's just talk about the trucks. Okay. So what, what was Paul's primary truck? Around the farm, most of the time, F-250. All right, but what was his primary mode of transportation? Was it a truck? It was an F-150. And was it white? It was. Okay, and then, and then, um, and did he drive that around the farm some? Sometimes, yes. And then there was a big F-250. That's correct. And that was also white, wasn't it? That's correct. Did that have a name, the F big F-250 farm truck? Yeah, white boy. That was the older F-250. And then there was a, another one called Dolly? That's correct. That was a newer F-250. That was a newer F-250. And then there was a... Was there a black truck? There was. And that was um, F-150? It was. And was that uh, Buster's old truck? It was. So there were um, just, and then, so Buster had a, excuse me, so Buster had a, uh, another vehicle and his old F-150 stayed at Moselle, correct? That's correct. And then Paul had his white one, 50 pickup and 
and where um, he was not at Moselle, there were still three other trucks at Moselle, right? That's correct. Dolly, White Boy, and then um, Buster's old black pickup. That's correct. And when Paul was there, he would drive any one of those trucks, wouldn't he? Yes, sir. On the farm. And no matter which one he, he was driving, he would most often have a, some sort of firearm in the truck, right? That's correct. Most of the time on the farm, he had a firearm in the vehicle. And those trucks, they would either stay down at the shed, the workshop, or, or at the house. I mean, there was no set place for them, correct? That's correct. And they didn't lock the trucks up, did they? Not normally. I mean, it's, and then Paul would leave guns in the trucks, wouldn't he? That's correct. I mean, Paul would leave guns everywhere, just about, wouldn't he? Yeah, he could leave. He left a lot of stuff different places. Yeah. Did he ever leave any guns at your house? Uh, I'm sure he has over the years. Okay. Um, and then uh, he would leave guns in the workshop, right? I have seen guns in the workshop, yes. And then he, um, did they keep the workshop, workshop locked? It just depends. Not a whole lot, but I have remembered it's being locked, yes. Was it more often not locked than locked? Probably more recent. Yeah, it, it wasn't locked. Did they, um, if someone were bent on mischief, would it be a hard thing to go up on that property and steal stuff? Probably not around the the sheds, it wouldn't be too hard. And if someone were bent on mischief, would it be a hard thing to go open up and rifle through or look through White Boy or Dolly or Buster's old black pickup truck? That is possible, yes. And there were no security cameras down at the, um, at the old airplane hangar, the, the workshop, the kennels, and the pole barn and skinny shed, were they? Not that I was ever aware of. Okay. And there were no, and the, the cabin where you guys stayed that summer, there was no security cameras there either, right? Not that I knew of. And was that cabin, did it stay locked? Um, sometimes it was locked, sometimes it wasn't. Paul left guns there too, didn't he? I have seen guns in that, that cabin before, yes. I want to um, not turn this thing upside down, but you talked about handsome. Who's handsome? Mr. Randolph Murdoch. And, and Ms. Libby is, is M. who? Who's Ms. Libby? M. M. And that's uh, Paul and Buster's grandparents, right? That's correct. And you know where they live? In Almeda. Almeda. And uh, just generally, where's Almeda? It's on the outside of Barnville. Okay. Is it like a crossroads? Mm, it's a veer off. You go toward Ridgeland. If you go, if you veer off, if you stay on that road, you go to Embassy. Right. If you're coming out of Hampton toward Barnville, then then where the veer off is, that's called Almeda. That's correct. Now, to get to Almeda. And the most direct route, let me do this right, okay. So, can you see from back there? I can. And so this is the main house right here, correct? That's correct. And you can get down to Moselle Road by going one or two ways, right? You can either take a left and go down by the shop in the kennels, or you can go straight out the main driveway, is that right? Yes, you can go out both ways. But when you hit Moselle Road, would you turn right or left if you're going the most direct route to Almeda? Turn right. And be going down this way. That's correct. Okay.
Can you ask a little bit about Paul's cell phone usage? He, he was on it a lot? He was on it a lot, yes, sir. Yeah. And, um, and did the battery get down low pretty regularly? Yes, he would let his phone die sometime or he would lose it. Well, and, and when it would get down low, did, did he have a habit of you know, not using it to try to keep him going all the way out? Yes, I have seen that happen before. And have you done that yourself? <laughs> yes, sir. And um, phone coverage, cell phone coverage on that property is somewhat, when I say that property, I'm talking about Moselle, somewhat spotty, isn't it? It is. And is there, is there better coverage up at the house than down at the kennels? Mm, I would not. I wouldn't think so. Okay. I mean, and, it's kind of hit and miss. And you can be down at the kennels and you can be going to walk 10 yards one way and you'd have some coverage. 10 yards the other way, you wouldn't have coverage. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. Now, Back up here, um, you know, we don't have any measurements on, on how, what this distance is from the kennels to the house, but I mean, if you're just <coughs> driving in a buggy or a car or what have you, I mean, tell the jury roughly how long it would take from, oh, in a vehicle to go from the kennels to the house. It all depends how fast you're driving, but it don't take long to get from the sheds to the house. I mean, you can do it. Under two minutes? Definitely under two minutes. Going fast enough, you can do it in a minute or less, I suspect. Is that right? Yes, if you're going fast enough, you would be able to make it from the sheds to the house in under a minute. Okay. You were um, asked about turkey season. Um, when, and when it started and when it ended, you remember, and you can tell me, I, I don't know, when's turkey season start? Yes, yeah, most time mid-March to early May. Okay. How about duck season? When does that start? The first season starts around Thanksgiving, I think the, week, the weekend before Thanksgiving. And when's the um, second season start? Sometime in December. And when's it end? Uh, end of January. Do um, you go duck hunting with Paul? Yes, sir, I have. And, and they had a duck pond on the property? That's correct. And, and did they keep it full all year, or did they drain it and plant it for the season? Yeah, they would, they would drain it after duck season and be ready to plant in the springtime. And you helped with that? I did. And would Mr. Alec be involved, help doing that? But he would. But, and, and that was part of Paul's passion, doing things like that? That's correct. Now, waterfowl shells load are different than uh, turkey load, right? That's correct. And what's the difference? Steel shot. And um, steel shot for what? For ducks, waterfowl. And, and why, is it just preferred or is it required? That's required. Okay. Because you don't want lead in the water? That's correct. Okay. But for hunting purposes, if you just had your choice, would you rather hunt with lead or steel? Lead shot. Because it has greater knockdown power? It does. Okay. Is that why you would rather, or, or just price too, I suspect? What's that again? Why would you prefer lead over steel? It has better knockdown. It's better. Okay. Now you were asked um, questions about 300 blackouts, and at one, in one time, uh, Paul had his own, and Buster had his own. They had. Two, three hundred blackouts. You remember that? I did. And then you heard that um, Paul had um, had one stolen out of his truck at a party. That's correct. And 
And do you remember roughly when that was? I'm not exactly sure. Years ago? Yeah, it's been a good many years ago. And, uh, and whenever, when, in, in recent memory, did you, have you ever seen Paul with a 300 blackout other than the black one with the thermal scope? Not to my knowledge. So whenever you were with Paul and he had a 300 blackout, it was the black one with the thermal scope. That's correct. Did you ever see a 300 blackout around the house that was black without a thermal scope? Not to my knowledge, I had. Okay. And just, I know the jury's heard it. What's a thermal scope? Picks up the heat from the animal. You can see it at nighttime because of the heat. It's for night hunting? That's correct. And that's the best time to hunt hogs? It is. But during the daytime they stay in the swamp? That's correct. At night they come out? Yes, sir. And do y'all had, had cameras out there to see when they were coming out? Sometimes we did. Okay. Now you, um, you listened to this videotape and heard um, that, that was your dog, Cash? It was. Chocolate Lab? Yes, sir. And, and you heard Ms. Maggie? Yes, sir. And you heard Paul, obviously. That's correct. And, and Ms. Maggie was saying he got a, I forgot him. A guinea. Guinea. And then, then you heard a voice say, no, it's a chicken. Do you remember whose voice that was? That was Mr. Alex that said it the first time, and then Paul also said it was a chicken. Okay. And then, um, and then someone says, Bubba, let go of that chicken or something like that? Yeah, just who, holler for Bubba. And, and whose voice did you recognize hollering for Bubba? Mr. Ellett. Okay. And who's Bubba? Their dog. Do they have, uh, and, and was, B Bubba a yellow lab? He was. Did Bubba have his own kennel? He did. Which one was it? Most of the time he was in the first one right beside the feed room. Okay. Now, you had talked to Paul. I think the records show you had a four-minute telephone conversation before that, that video was taken, which you didn't receive until law enforcement showed you but you remember you talked to Paul for about four minutes right that's correct and, and I believe when, when you were interviewed um, you said it sounded like Mr. Alec had, had pulled up or something to that effect driven up do you remember that no I don't ever remember hearing a vehicle okay I just remember hearing a, a third voice And the, and the next day, excuse me, was, was, it, was it the 8th, the next day you went over um, and met with, and went into the house at, at Moselle and you saw Maggie's parents? That's correct. And, and that's when Grandma, Ms. Branstetter, asked you uh, if you heard Maggie's voice? Yes. Okay. And you told her you did. Told her I heard. I talked to Paul and heard Miss Maggie. And and you told told him in front of everybody that you had um, thought you'd heard, heard Alex's voice too, right? That's correct. And he didn't push back whatsoever. No sir. What what was Alex's um, demeanor uh, when you first saw him after the murders and? days after what he was just real real distraught sad just tore up about it did he cry a lot yes sir did he hug you he did did he cry yes sir did you cry yes sir I mean did he cry the, the day after and the day after I mean that was really sad right. one second now.
On this uh, vi video, uh, you've been around Alec, Maggie, and Paul most all your life. What, was there any, did you notice any signs of distress or anxiety or anything out of the ordinary? I did not. And, uh, and you've been around Maggie and Alec and their whole family a lot? Almost all of my life, yes, sir. And um, would you see Alec openly show his display of affection and love to Maggie? Yes, sir. And from your observation, they have a close, good relationship? That's correct. And they were loving to each other and, and to Paul and Buster and their friends, correct? That's correct. And you can, can you think of any circumstance that you can envision, knowing them as you do, where Alec would brutally murder Paul and Maggie? Not that I can think of. Thank you. That's all the questions I have. Anything further? You were asked some questions about the sheds being unlocked. Paul ever complained to you that people were up there stealing all kinds of stuff all the time? I was never aware of people stealing anything. Um, when you talked to Paul and heard Maggie and Alec at 840, was there any problem with that voice call or did it come through just fine? The reception was good. The call came through, yes. And the last conversation you had with Paul was he was going to do what if the FaceTime didn't work? Send me a video. And he never did. That's correct. You've heard that video and you hear three voices, is that correct? Maggie, Paul, and Mr. Alec? In the video, yes, sir. When you're uh, standing, if you're at the house or inside the house on the second floor or something like that, can you see the sh roofs of the sheds and in, in down there? The last time I had been out there, yes, you would be able to see the top of the structure. And if you're standing out here in front of them sheds, could you see the top of the house the other way? Same thing, yeah. Last time I was there, you would be able to see the top of the structure. There was trees growing between the houses. And that was a long time ago, right? That's correct. Down there at the sheds, uh, did they have like outdoor lighting down there? Yes, sir, they did. And if all that was on, could you see all that lighting from the house? Yes, you would be able to see that there were lights on from the house. And if those lights were on, it'd be pretty well lit up, is that right? If all of them were, yes. You were asked about uh, the boat wreck. Um, were you aware that Paul had been charged in that boat wreck? I was. Were you aware that Alec Murdoch had been sued in that boat wreck? I was. What was your perception of Alec's wealth? Did you believe he was a fairly wealthy man? Yes, sir. How long have you known Alec Murdoch? Pretty much all my life. As you sit here today, did you really know him? Yes, I know Mr. Ellett. But as you sit here today, do you really know him? Yes, I know Mr. Ellett. Thank you. Anything further? No, Your Honor. You may step down. <laughs>